Another variation of calorimetry is called coffee cup calorimetry. And this is not a experiment that we typically do as part of a formal laboratory, but it is very common to run coffee cup calorimetry experiments as part of a lab for your general chemistry course. So typically talk about the calculations involved. So what we're doing here is we're taking a coffee cup and we're calling it a calorimeter. So just like what we did with the bomb calorimeter, and we're saying the surroundings are the styrofoam cup and the liquids inside and whatever reaction is going on is the system. So here's an example. I take a coffee cup. I had 100 milliliters of one molar HCl and then I put one gram of magnesium in, into it and start stirring it up. And what happens is a reaction occurs between the magnesium and the HCl and the temperature of the calorimeter increases from 22.2 degrees C to 44.8 degrees C. So typically you have the cup, you add the reactants, and then you have a thermometer that you stir and you monitor the temperature of the thermometer. And just like with bomb calorimetry, what we're going to do is get Q of reaction from the temperature change of the coffee cup calorimeter and from that we're going to be able to calculate delta H for this reaction. One of the things we need to know is the amount of solution inside of our coffee cup. So this is where coffee cup calorimetry and bomb calorimetry vary. So when we do coffee cup calorimetry the amount of solution inside of there can change so we need to actually come up with the mass and the specific heat of the solution inside of the coffee cup. Remember, we didn't have to deal with that with bomb calorimetry. So inside of our coffee cup, we have an HCl magnesium solution, and typically they give you the specific heat and the density of the solution. So these are going to be two values that you need. So you can see here the specific heat and the density is a little bit different than water, and that's because we now have magnesium inside of the solution. So one of the first things I need to know is what's the mass of the solution. So after I've added the magnesium and I stirred it all up, what's the mass of the solution that's inside of there? Here we're going to be using the fact that density is equal to mass divided by volume. We're looking for the mass of the solution. The density was given and the volume was given. So when I multiply these things together, I can calculate that solution weighs 101 grams. Then I want to figure out what Q of the solution is. So this is really the calorimeter. So I want to figure out what's going on with the solution. Is it absorbing or giving off heat? Q solution is equal to MC delta T equation. Mass we just found, so that's the mass of solution. Here is the specific heat that was given. And then delta T is T final minus T initial, and both of those values were given. When we're done, we get that the Q of solution is equal to 9.61 times 10 to the third joules. So just like bomb calorimetry, now we need to remember that the calorimeter, or in this case the solution, was the surroundings, and we're interested in the system, or the reaction. And we need to remember that Q reaction is equal to negative Q solution. So all we need to do to go from Q solution to Q reaction is change the sign on Q solution that we just calculated here. So Q reaction is negative 9.61 times 10 to the third joules. Now that we have Q reaction, all we need to do is find the number of moles of reactant. I told you that we used one gram of magnesium. We can get the atomic weight from the periodic table, and if you take grams and divide by atomic weight, what you end up with is moles. And then we use the equation that the enthalpy of reaction is equal to Q reaction divided by mole of reactant. Q of reaction, we calculated by finding the Q of solution. Uh, mole of reactant, we were able to calculate because we knew how many grams of magnesium and what the atomic weight of magnesium was. And now all we simply need to do is divide these two numbers together. So we take Q reaction, divide by mole of reactant, and we get the enthalpy for the reaction. And so here, once again, the sign on the enthalpy is negative, which means that this reaction is exothermic.